What is going on guys? Today we are going to do a little video on pump diagnostics. Uh, I see a lot of forums on uh, Facebook, people asking for help. Uh, a lot of people just shoot them in the wrong direction completely. Uh, more like they're probably just trolling, but you know, kind of makes me really wonder if these people actually know what they're talking about. Because there'd be some really, really weird suggestions out there that just no way it could possibly be that. So I'm gonna try and think of kind of every scenario I can think of. Um, obviously there's gonna be some that I can't really think of off the top of my head. But uh, before we get into it, take a little break, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I've got some pretty cool stuff coming up that you definitely wanna make sure not to miss. So with that being said, let's get to it. All right, as you can see, I got two different style of pumps here. Uh, basically all it is is just a different configuration for the dumps. This would be more likely used on a two pump setup. Uh, could be used as a front pump on a three pump setup. This is more likely used for a three pump setup. It just has one dump, goes to one cylinder normally. Just kind of want to show you two different versions. Uh, we'll work with both versions in the video, but you know, this way is hopefully it can relate to your setup a little bit easier. I'm gonna start with the first one that comes to the top of my head. Uh, a lot of people ask, the car is leaking down. First, check for leaks. You know, look for physical hydraulic oil outside of the system. You know, leaky cylinder, leaky hose, are your fittings leaking? Do you have any oil coming out of your dumps, oil running down the block? You know, that's that's number one where I would start. Uh, people can say a motor seal will cause your car to leak down. No, it will not. There's no way. Your check valve prevents that from happening. So if you're getting oil out of your motor, you just have a bad motor seal. That's all there is to it. But with that being said, say you look everywhere, everything's good. There's no external leaks. Your cylinders aren't leaking. Your hoses are good and tight. Where do you go from there? You know, assuming the car lifts up, stays up, and just slowly leaks down, uh, one of two things you want to check. First, what I would do, close your slowdown valve. Reason being, if you have a piece of trash inside this dump, or say this dump is stuck open, which if it was stuck open, it'd fall pretty quick. But if you have a piece of trash stuck in here, that fluid will bypass that trash. It'll come from your hose, go through here and slowly creep back. So if you close that, that's manually shutting off that path. So oil cannot go back in there. Say you close that, car stops leaking down. You can open it up, more likely you'll feel the car doop, jump just a little bit, relieving that pressure that's built up on that line. So that right there would pretty much tell you your dump's bad or you have some kind of contamination stuck in there, you know, causing an internal leak, basically letting it bypass the dump. Now, with that being said, you close that, and it still keeps leaking down, well, as long as you have no other external leaks, it's gonna be a check valve. Basically what that does is that keeps all your fluid from going back into your pump. Now fluid comes out of your pump, goes straight through your dump and to your cylinder. If that check valve wasn't there, it would literally just come right back through. So that's why that check valve is there, it is a one directional valve, not meaning that it can't leak. When it leaks, it becomes a two directional valve. So if you close your slowdown valve and you still have a leak, Chances are it's a bad check valve. Either the spring's worn out or you got trash in it. All right, next we're gonna kind of touch in a subject that can really go all over the board. You know, see a lot of people say, hey, I hit my front switch, my motor spins, it doesn't do anything. Well, there are a few different things. Uh, if you just built your setup, could possibly have a check valve in backwards. It is possible. Uh, usually you can kind of hear the pump bog down. Sometimes it'll make like a screeching noise. Um, Definitely something you want to check and make sure you got your valves in the right way. Could be bad seals in the pump head. Not saying that's unlikely. Um, I would just try to save that one for last trying to look in because then you got to tear apart your pump and all that. But first start out, make sure you got fluid in your pump. You know, move your car all the way down, take the tank, plug out, visually see it, you got fluid in there. Once again, uh, when your fluid is low, usually it'll make a different sound. It'll kind of be a screeching sound as well with a dry pump head. Doesn't mean it always will be, uh, but you, you definitely want to check there first. Next, could be a dump stuck open. Kind of same scenario as before. Close your slowdown valve all the way, see if your car lifts up. If your car lifts up, fine. Open your slowdown valve. If your car drops, well, that dump is stuck open. Could be one of two things. Could have constant power going to it. You know, something could be shorted out somewhere. Take your solenoid off, see if the problem goes away. Problem doesn't go away, you got a bad valve, it's just stuck, replace it. Another thing it could be, could have a broke key. Um, sometimes they'll make noise, I have seen them break, and they'll not make noise. 
So you definitely want to check that. Um, usually I kind of leave that a little bit later on down the diagnostic list, you know, because it's not fun pulling motors off all the time. A lot of times I get questions, you know, my solenoids are clicking, my motor's not doing nothing. Well, there's quite a few things that it could be. Um, you have a bad battery. That's, that's probably like the number one problem I would see. Check your solenoids. Um, take your power wires off. Use a voltmeter, use continuity, make sure that you are getting a connection from the inlet to the outlet. They can't all click and seem like they're making continuity like they're supposed to. Without running a meter on it, you're really not, you really don't know for sure. So I start there. After that, uh, I go to the batteries. So if I got good continuity on my solenoids, next thing I do is go to my batteries. I don't use a voltmeter. Uh, a voltmeter is okay. Yeah, you can tell your batteries are charged, but really need a load tester. Uh, Harbor Freight has these, they're cheap, maybe like 20 bucks or so. Difference between a load tester and a voltmeter. A load tester is basically gonna tell you if that battery's good or bad. A uh, voltmeter, it'll show it has voltage, it'll say it's fully charged, but without actually putting a load on it, you won't really know. How it pretty much acts, uh, we run our batteries in series, you know, 12, 24, 36, 48, and so on. Well, if you got a bad battery, either anywhere in there, it's basically like that voltage hitting a brick wall. You know, it's like good, good, bam. It just stops, you know, and it will not send proper voltage to your motor. That's why you'll have, you know, sparking motors or a weird sound in your motor or nothing at all. It can literally just put no load to the motor at all. You will see voltage. Uh, if you put your voltage, if you put your meter on the end of your solenoids and hit it, you'll see voltage, but it just doesn't have the amperage there and it like hits a brick wall. So definitely keep that in mind. Uh, that's really, Really, that's probably where most of the problem is. Uh, unless you find out you have a bad solenoid, you know, nine times out of ten you got a bad battery, and it can make the it can make the pump do really weird things, you know. So keep that in mind. Uh, very handy tool to have, that's for sure. All right, next on my list of things I'm thinking of, uh, people will say my car jacks up, but it won't let down. Well, there's a few different things that could be there too. Uh, start with the basics. Make sure you got power. You got power going to that. Usually you can hear your dump solenoid click. You know, it is kind of a lighter sound, but you can't hear them click. Uh, if you don't hear it click, check your power. You know, worst case scenario, uh, strip the wire back, run it to 12 volts. That way you know it's for sure got power. If it doesn't work, it could be a bad solenoid, could be a bad dump, one of the two. Say you got power, still not dumping. You do hear a clicking. Well, it could be it's overlocked. Uh, if you jack the car up, keep it in the switch, uh, 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 it will build so much pressure this valve cannot open. Uh, what you really need to do there, it's kind of scary, uh, put your wrench on your fitting, slowly crack it. Don't go trying to take the thing off. It does have a ton of pressure behind it, but slowly crack it, relieve some of that pressure. Um, basically, I'd put a rag under there, slowly crack it, let it drip a little bit. I would hit my dump until it finally relieves enough pressure to open your dump back up. So you got a pump configuration like this. You're having a problem out of your one of your dumps. The easiest thing to do, if you have enough wire, swap your solenoids. If your problem follows your solenoid, chances are it's in the wiring or the solenoid itself. If the problem doesn't, you narrow it down to being in that dump valve. So hopefully that'll make things a little bit easier for you. Let's say you keep blowing solenoids. Um, now, if you're getting into high voltage, there ain't really a whole lot I'm gonna help you out on here. Uh, say you're running you know, 48 volts, 60 volts, Main thing that kills a solenoid is either a bad ground or a low charge battery. I always mount these directly to the rack and I bolt them down. I do not use self-tapping screws. Self-tapping screws will eventually wiggle loose and you'll have a problem. It will create a bad ground. On my battery rack, I grind. Wherever this is going to mount, I will grind that raw. I'll take the paint completely off. Or if I'm painting the rack, I'll usually you know, put a piece of tape down, I'll trace this, leave that raw paint over it peel of tape, I got nice shiny metal. I have used dielectric grease under here. Uh, it's supposed to help promote a little bit better bond. Eh, hit or miss, you know. But yeah, definitely gotta make sure to have a good ground. And really, in all honesty, it would not hurt to run a wire from this to where your ground is bolted up on your rack. That way you know it is getting 100% ground. Um, I mean, it shouldn't really matter. The whole rack is metal, but you know, better safe than sorry, I guess. Also, don't use cheap solenoids. Uh, I've been using Acumaxes for a long time. They are pretty awesome. I've also used parts store stuff for quite a while, but I've gotten some really, really cheap stuff and it didn't work out too well. Um, never really had too many problems out of solenoids. I know a lot of people do. 
Mainly what I think it is, they just run the batteries low or they just have a poor ground. Uh, also, don't mount these on top of your batteries. That's a terrible idea. Yeah, it's a fire hazard waiting to happen. I've got a video showing you how to diagnose a solenoid, uh, what to check for, how to look for it. Also, check out the switches. I'll put that in a link up above so you can check that out and kind of save some time in this video trying to explain all that. So hopefully that's everything I can think of off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure I covered the majority of it. Hopefully it helps you out and gets you up and running again. Uh, if not, feel free to message me on Facebook. You know, I get a lot of guys messaging me. Um, literally today I was putting this pump together. Putting this pump together, my bad. Uh, I was putting it together. A guy asked me uh, how to hook up a hopping switch. And I was like, I got all this stuff right here. I might as well show him. You know, took a little break from that. Showed him how to do it. Simple, easy in and out. He's just hooked up, ready to roll. You know, don't hesitate. Message me. I'm just a normal dude. I will reply. I like to make sure everybody's cars are going. You know, what's the sense of having a lower if you can't drive it, right? But with that being said, uh, going to pretty much wrap up the video here. We do have shirts back in stock. I've got sizes from small all the way up to 6X. Uh, you guys ordered a ton of them last time. We sold out really, really quick. Thank you very much for that. Uh, it kind of blew my mind on that one. Uh, back when I had my shop in Florida, I got some shirts made. Yeah, I still own like every single shirt. You know, back in the day, everyone was like, oh, you're my friend. I see you one for free. Well, I had to pay for these shirts. So things are different now, I guess. People are willing to support the channel. And nobody's local, so I guess they don't expect a homeboy hookup. But I appreciate you guys. Uh, hit me up once again on Facebook to order a shirt, and I'll get one shipped out to you. And as I said earlier, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. You do have some big things coming up uh, you definitely do not want to miss. So keep an eye on every single video. You may not want to skip a video because you might want to might end up missing the video you really need to see. And with that being said, I'm gonna leave it here. Just remember, you won't know what you can do until you try it. Get out of there, fix your stuff. See ya. <laughs> Good shot, got away free. It lives to die another day.